morning or afternoon, uh, whichever you prefer, I suppose. How is everybody doing? Same old, same old, I assume, which is not a bad thing. Where is, there we go, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, let's see. And from the Oz Coleman, Charles 75 in. And that is all I see thus far. Of course, I just hit the go live button. So hopefully a few more people will come in and hang out here as we go along, as is usually the case. Mm. So, and there's Sean Zimmerman. How has everybody's week been so far? Anybody have anything cool to share that happened this week? I had a pretty unexciting, uneventful week, which I'm not complaining about, but my week was very unexciting and uneventful. Thus, not worth talking about. So... Uh, my plan is to, we are, um, I am taking the missus, uh, out furniture shopping here later this afternoon and we're going to grab some, grab something to eat and, you know, just go and hang out for a while. We haven't gotten to do that much here over the last year or so as, as most people haven't. So we're going to make a, make a thing of it. Uh, Dave Escobar, Virginity Rocks, Michael Glass. Michael Glass says I'm running a crate GFX 2200H into another crate 600. I like the GFX 2200s. Those actually are pretty. Uh, those are pretty cool heads. Yeah, you know, they're. Uh, I, I saw one listed on the interwebs here a couple of weeks ago, and I I didn't end up buying it because I thought it was I thought it was priced too high. Uh, you know, I'm not I'm not paying that much for it, but. Uh, but looked like he was in pretty good shape. Uh, Michael Glass, hello Robert. Any experience with the Splawn Nitro? Uh, the only I've I've only played a couple of Splawn amps. Uh, they're both awesome. But the which one's the Nitro? Is that the one that uh, one of the ones that I played was the one that was the signature model of uh johnny i can't remember the guy's name he was the guy that replaced he was the he was the guy who became the guitar player in dokken after uh you know when when don dokken and george lynch were or were not on speaking terms and you know they went out and did a tour late 90s you know a few tours probably late 90s early 2000s uh whoever it was that was playing uh that was playing guitar for dokken uh is a splawn artist and it was that guy's signature model that I played, I so I, I played one of those, one other, one other, and no, it wasn't Red Beach. It was a different guy, Johnny, Johnny Slinger, or something like that. I can't remember. The, I, I, I I've never heard him anything else. The Quick Rod, that's the one. Um, Quick Rod was the one. So uh, I have not played a Nitro, unfortunately. Uh, the Diamond Amps Nitro is or, um, the, the nitrox rather i guess is what that one's called is one that i've kind of been eyeballing for a while i need those guys are only about 30 30 or 40 minutes from them. i need to drive up there and see if they would you know do something for me you know if they would if they would build me or get me an amp if i gave me if i drove some business their way because those are cool amps too uh, David Savage, 21, says, Hi, Robert, I need a 412 for my new band I'm on a tight budget. Uh, should I get a cheap new one or a secondhand possibly toured Marshall 1960A? Oh, I mean, the, the good thing about the Marshall 1960A, you know, the, the, the regular standard 1960, it's a pretty... I don't want to call it universal cabinet because not everything sounds good through it, but it's a it's generally a, a pretty good sounding cabinet, and it's it you it tends to play nice with most heads. 
Uh, I have one of those cabs, and I run different heads into it all the time, and they all sound good. Um, the other thing that you could do if you're on a budget, uh, get on Amazon and search for a brand called Seismic Audio. And what they, you know, they, you can probably buy an empty cab, an empty 412 cab from them for, I don't know, you know, 100, maybe 200 bucks, maybe, probably closer to 150. And then grab, uh, you know, go to, uh, and this is, you know, you can save, also save some money by doing, by going with a 212 as well. Cause if you're touring, you're going to be miking it. You know, these days there's really not much of a need for a 412. A 212 will get the job done just as easily. Uh, but then go get some uh, a pair of warehouse guitar speakers. You know, I, I like the Veteran 30s myself because they're Vintage 30 clones. And honestly, I think they sound better than Vintage 30s. Uh, but they're about half the price. So load them up with those speakers, you know, because the, the cabs are built really, really well. And that would probably be the most inexpensive way I know to, I know to do it. You know, you're going to have to wire it up yourself or pay somebody to do it. But if you don't know how to do it yourself, but, uh, if you're looking for a good 412 on a budget, that's definitely one way to go because you, you know, even if you, if you buy used 1960, I mean, you're still going to pay 500 bucks for it. Probably, you know, uh, unless it's really, really beat up, you know, and you shouldn't have to pay that kind of money for a beat up, you know, even 400 bucks for a beat up 1960. You know, at that point, you know, I, I, I would just, I'd buy an empty seismic and fill it up yourself. <laughs> Benny says, I had to get a Gibson Special TV yellow with P90s after trying trying out my DSL-40 this week. It's good. DSL-40s are awesome, man. That is a killer, killer amplifier. I keep I keep asking myself why I don't own one. You know, then I remember I, I happen to own, <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of other amps, and you know I don't need that one at this very particular point in time. But yeah, DSLs are killer, dude. Hmm. Uh, alrighty, JG Mopar's here. Uh, William De Silva, Patrick Callies, uh, Doug Santaniello. San Santaniello. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right or not. That's a new name I'm not familiar with. Welcome, uh, Scott Brockway. There's another new name I'm not familiar with. Welcome to both of you guys. Uh, let's see. Michael Glasses, grab a Marshall mode for MF280 or MF400, cheap on the used market and well-made. Yeah, that's true. And those killers, those those cabinets are awesome. The 412 especially, which is, that's the 400. Uh, those, those things are awesome. Way, you know, the big oversized 412s. You know, if, if you know, you're going to pay through the nose to ship. And that's you know, this is the case with any 412 cab, though. You know, if, you, if you're buying a used 412 cab off the internet, you're going to, I mean, you're going to pay through the nose to ship it. They're, you're just, you're just not getting around it. So. Uh. William Silva says, ordered my first telly last night. Fuji Gen, have any experience with, it, with FGN? I do not, actually. I mean, I've heard, I mean, I mean, that factory's been making guitars for so many other brands for so many years. Uh, I think in that, I think that's where a lot of the the Japanese-made Ibanez or Jackson guitars, I think it was Jackson uh, guitars were made back in, you know, like the uh, 80s and 90s. You know that uh, that's a that's a guitar factory knows what they're doing. Uh, JG Mopar says use Mesa oversized sometimes under five hundred. I haven't seen I haven't seen one of those under five hundred in a while though. I mean they're they're for the longest time those things were like six six hundred six hundred fifty bucks all day long. And, you know, they did drop down a little bit, but I, I haven't seen them go down below 500 for, for quite some time. 
So, and, I, and really, I think the only reason they dropped down is because so many people started switching to 212s uh, just because they got tired of lugging 412s around all over the place. Everybody's been going smaller and smaller a lot for the last 10 years or so. <clears throat> JG Mopar hitting up the PayPal account. Thank you, sir, very, very much. Uh, which reminds me, if you guys, if you guys also would like to support the channel, there's a little, uh, a little dollar icon down there below the chat, I believe. At least that's where it is on my screen. Uh, and uh, you can do so by clicking that button. And uh, all of that money goes to supporting this here very channel. So you know that's uh, that's that's how I buy gear and stuff for you know stuff like that to demo for you guys. So. Uh, there's probably going to be a lot of Zoe in this video, by the, in this, uh, this live stream, by the way, because it is an exceptionally nice day outside. So there's going to be lots of people walking by the house and, uh, you know, it's, it's her job to, you know, to let us know when that happens. <laughs> so my wife's down there trying to, trying to keep her corralled, but I'm not optimistic, especially if there's somebody out there walking their dog. <laughs> oh, let's see. Where was I? Doug Sant Santiniello, whose last name I can't pronounce, uh, says I'm selling a ni nice 1960B with four new Celestian speakers, 500 bucks. Very good condition. Problem with shipping. That's true. Shipping on that thing is not going to be cheap. Uh, hey, Haas Coleman in the super chat. Thanks, dude. I greatly appreciate it. Yeah, when you get when you guys hit up the super chat like that, you know, don't be afraid to pop a question or something like that in there too. You know, uh, you know, I'm happy. I'm happy to answer just about anything that you might have for me as best I can. Anyway, I may not. Uh, I may not have an answer, you know, have an answer that you're looking for, but I will certainly try. JG Mopar says, "My Marshall Cab used to be Klaus from Ugly Kid Joe is beyond beat to crap. It sounds awesome. I love Ugly Kid Joe. They were one of my all-time favorite, like early '90s bands. I mean, they were, their style was more '80s, but you know, I mean, and you know, they're from California, so I mean, you can tell that's." <clears throat> um, you know that's you know that was that was the scene that they came from, but I love that band. Uh, what was that? The, the America's Least Wanted album. I still listen to that thing all the time. Great record. That dude's a good guitar player. Mm. Oz Coleman says, "Positive Grid Spark was one uh, one way I got to play the Soldano 100." My favorite amp, but way out of my budget. And I don't feel bad about that, dude. Soldano 100, you know, the SLO 100 is out of most people's budgets. I mean, those that that I mean, that amp's five thousand dollars. <laughs> I mean, most people cannot afford a five thousand dollar amplifier. Uh, Scott Brockway is ah, Scott Brockway is formerly Roy Batty. Doing my own thing and using my real name. Cool. Atta boy, quit hiding behind the interwebs. I'm just kidding. No, I'm not accusing you, you or anybody of hiding behind the interwebs. <laughs> William De Silva says, what speakers come in those Mode 4s? I think they are the Celestian K100s. Uh, the Mode 4 head is 350 watts, so you know it's got. they got to be... Uh, they got to be powerful, you know, high, you know, have a, um, RMS high enough to be able to handle that kind of, that kind of power. So, uh, but I, so I think it's four Celestian K100s and the 412s anyway. The two 12s might be different, but the 412s I know are K100s and they sound awesome. They sound great. I had, <laughs> the last band I played in was a, was a classic rock, Southern rock cover band. And, you know, I, I actually played bass in that band. 
and the uh, the other guy, you know, the the guitar player in that band, is a good friend of mine. Still, you know, we're still good friends. I love Rick to death. Uh, but Rick played two <laughs> Marshall DSL 100, like you know, the old JCM 2000 uh, Marshall DSL 100 full stacks. <laughs> And I kept asking, I said, I don't know why you need all that. And I mean, I wasn't going to try to talk him out of it, uh, you know, just because it was overkill. That's what he wanted to use. So, you know, but he used two full stacks. But, you know, when we were playing out the one, you know, the, you know, one of the you know, three of the cabs are 1960s. And then the fourth one was actually a mode four cab. And the mode four cab is the one that he always mic'd up. So mode four cabs are awesome, man. I'd love to get one. I just don't know where in the hell I'd put it. Uh, Park Kingery, what's up, dude? I saw one of Park's pedals is about to be demoed uh, from uh, a, a newer, smaller, uh, smaller channel that I just discovered. Uh, Gary, uh, very, I keep wanting to say Gary Coleman, but I don't think that's right. Uh, Gary Campbell is his name. I, th I think that I think he's his channel might just be named after himself, but uh, looks like he's getting ready to demo a new Overdrive pedal that Park just came out with. I saw the teaser thing on uh, on Facebook anyway, so. <clears throat> William De Silva says, get two Harley Benton 212s. I paid, I think, less than 300 bucks ship for uh, for one, that is. That's true. I, you know, I was going to mention the Harley Bentons, the Harley Benton cabs as well, and I got distracted and forgot about it, but uh, the Harley Benton cabs are, and those things are killer, dude. You know, real legit vintage 30s, and they're by far cheaper than any other vintage 30 cab that you're going to find out there. I mean, they and Harley Benton, they're, they're selling those things like hotcakes. So, you know, I think Toman have had to adjust their shipping policies overseas if, you, if you're over here on this side of the pond. But uh, still, even then, I, I don't think it's that much more than it used to be, and it's still, still a really good value. Yeah, and they 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 do come with the import vintage, you know, the Chinese vintage thirties, not the UK ones, obviously. But still, there's so many people out there that don't realize how many different versions of the vintage thirty there are. You know, as long as they're vintage thirties, they're happy. <laughs> Uh, let's see. S Fear Six is here. Is that any guitar pickups you wanted to try but didn't have a chance to install or demo? Oh. <laughs> one the one that I can think of a few that I can think of but one in particular that I've always that I've really wanted to try just because I want to see just how insane it is is uh, Seymour Duncan actually has a custom shop pickup called the Slug and <laughs> it's like the most ridiculous I think it's you know its output resistance rating is 48k which is absolutely insane the JB you know a Duncan JB by comparison, is about 15 in change. <laughs> the slug is three times, more than three times that. Uh, so I'd really like to try one of those, but again, it's a custom shop pickup, and you know, those those are not cheap. Uh, I've uh, I have I've always wanted to try a uh, uh, I, I've uh, I'd like to give a Demarzio Tone Zone another spin. I really liked that the last time I tried one of those. And uh, let's see. The uh, I have I've yet to get to try any bare knuckle pickups, uh, any bare knuckle pickups, or any uh, or the Fishman Fluence. I have not gotten to try any of those yet. So uh, the Fishman Fluence are probably going to be the you know the first on that list that I just gave you. But uh, I was planning on putting those into uh, into that Coloss guitar that I demoed here a while back but you know the more i think about it i don't know that i want to put any more money into that guitar just because it's you know it's it's already got so many inherent design flaws in it that uh i don't know it's worth it so at least not to spend that kind of money on pickups i don't know uh and I don't go swap. I don't swap pickups very often anymore. Anyway, I mean nowadays, if, you know, for the most part, anyway, if you know, if a guitar doesn't have a good set of set of pickups in it when I buy it, chances are I'm not going to buy it to begin with anyway. I mean, if the pickups are garbage in it, that's enough to turn me off. So.
you know, and do it. And I've, I've done a few, I've done a few videos on, on, uh, on very, on a couple different types of pickups and they are really the, I hate doing pickup videos, man. There, there's, there's so much work involved in them. I, you know, you gotta, I gotta, you know, one, I've got to modify one of my guitars. I don't necessarily want to modify, you know, and then I got to, you know, I, so I either got to take them, you know, put the new pickups in, um, and then if I don't, you know, if I like them or don't like them, you know, a lot of times I've actually, I've got to take them out and put the old, put the old ones back in. You know, it's just, it's not worth it. There's a lot of work involved. I've done a couple of them and, you know, the, I, I get, sometimes I get small pickup companies wanting me to demo their stuff. And I just, I, I'm not saying no, but I don't like doing those. Hmm. Uh, let's see. JD Bopar says, Mark, the drummer from Ugly Kid Joe, is a friend of mine. That's interesting. Are they still, do they still, are they still playing at all? You know, doing like regional tours or uh, anything like that? Or are they, uh, they officially kaput or, you know, and or hiatus? I'm not, I, I don't know. It uh, seems like I did see a new record from them about 10 years or so ago, but I, I can't remember. I like, the re I like the earlier stuff, but I admit I didn't follow them real well. Uh, old drummer, he says. <laughs> Michael Glass says, I use a 90s Crate Blue Voodoo All Steel Hardware Burst Construction. Cheap. I swapped in some eminence governor, eminence governors. Uh, I, you know, the, there's two versions of the blue voodoo cabs. There was the, uh, the, there was the B412S, which was the, that was like the, you know, the standard cab. And, uh, you know, the standard cab has, uh, that one actually came with eminence speakers in it of some kind, though I don't know which, which model. It may have been something that uh, that they designed specifically for crate. I can't recall. You know, and then they also had another 412 that had uh, vintage 30 cat. You know, that had vintage 30s in it that actually had the Celestian badge on the front of it. So, but yeah, they were good cabs. I I had the uh, the Blue Voodoo Eminence cab when I had my first Blue Voodoo. So I had the matching Blue Voodoo cab for it. It sounded good. It was, it was actually really really similar. That cab's real similar to a Marshall 1960, actually. Uh, Stay Curious says, Dave Friedman is awesome. He offered to build me a custom amp to my liking. Wow. I don't know what, I don't know what he would charge for something like that, but, uh, you know, if he's offering and you can swing it, I would take him up on that because there's, you know, Dave Friedman is one of the most brilliant amp designers and builders on the planet. Uh, Michael Glass says the MF400 has the K100s and the 280 has the Vintage 30s. That's true. Okay. So the 280, you know, so you know, the 280 obviously signifies the wattage. Well, the Vintage 30s are 60 watt speakers. I don't know where the 280 was coming from. Was there another version that's a 70 watt version, but still, I, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, the problem with the 280 is that, you know, theoretically it doesn't have the power handling that the, you know, that the head it was designed to go with pushes out, you know, because if it's only 280 watts, uh, and I'm, and I'm speculating, I haven't seen nearly as many of those as I have the K100s, uh, the, or the MF400s, but, uh, the, the, uh, the 280 cabs, if those only have, you know, if those are only 280 watts, the mode four heads are 350, so... Unless they were designed to be, you know, bought with uh, two of them. Then to be safe. JD Mopar says carbon 412s can be had for really cheap and are built like tanks. Some come with Celestians. That is true. Greg uh, Park says, uh, Greg Campbell, I was correct about uh, channels guy's name I was thinking of, and he said, mine is coming. 
So it looks like I'm going to get to demo it as well. Mm. William De Silva says it'll take about 10 days or so to get mine shipped from Toman, which is crazy fast as well. Uh, 10 day shipping from, that's yeah, not bad. You know, Toman's in Germany, so. Michael Glass says, I thought the Duncan El Diablo was hot. No. <laughs> yeah, no, they, uh, Duncan, Duncan laughed at the, at the El Diablo when they came out the slug. And then the, uh, it, it, for the longest time, the DiMarzio X2N was the hottest passive pickup on the planet. You know, that the X2N held that title for a long time, you know, and then, Duncan came out with some of their some of their custom there's some some of their custom shop stuff, and then the uh, you know of course it, it's you know it's just been like everything literally everything that bare knuckle pickups comes out with is I mean those things are all north of twenty <laughs> north of twenty k resistance seems like last last spec sheet I saw seemed like it. Uh, let's see. Voodoo Park says Voodoo Custom Pickups. JD Mopar says Rail Hammers. Uh, yeah, well, that's that's the other thing, man. There's so many other, so many new pickup companies that are coming out these days. I can't keep up with them all. <laughs> I mean, they're not popping up everywhere like pedal companies are, but there's a lot of them. Uh, Scott Brockway says, Robert, what happened to your old set with the amps and pedals and stuff? Uh, so that room is in the middle of an overhaul and, uh, a couple of things happened, you know, number one, I, you know, I'm, I'm reworking things and that's part of what I, you know, part of my project here this afternoon, actually. Um, you know, I'm trying to rework some things, reorganize some things and, uh, you know, make that room a little bit more logistically sound, uh, for me to do what I need to do in it. Um, you know, the other thing is that, you know, when I, when I started, you know, about a year and a half or so ago, um, maybe two, two years ago now, yeah, I guess close to two years ago now, uh, you know, when I started adding like full track recorded demos, uh, of, uh, you know, to my, uh, you know, to my videos, when, when I started doing that, you know, I was doing 90 something percent of that from out here. And I discovered that, you know, I could do, you know, I, uh, I could, you know, officially shoot an entire video from, you know, from this desk and, uh, you know, get, you know, get things done pretty, you know, a lot, you know, and, you know, and really, you know, create a higher quality video from all different aspects, uh, across the board. So, you know, I still, I still use, you know, the, well, the big, the problem that I discovered here is it's not really logistically it's not the easiest thing in the world if i actually want to want to you know grab one of my amps out of there you know and you know, i can bring it out here and i can plug it on the end of the the uh the my two notes torpedo live uh okay but something you know one they're big and heavy number two if i actually do want to mic up a cab from time to time i either got to you know run a hundred foot you know or 50 foot or 100 foot xlr cable or two or three and a speaker cable, um, you know, it's it's just it's a you know it's, it's all of a sudden it's cables running everywhere all over my house and I don't want that. Uh, so that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to move things around and you know there's there's some like I said there's things that have to, that have to happen uh, in order for me to get everything set up the way that I needed to get set up and you know and I'll still I'll still keep doing stuff like that out here as well but you know my amps and stuff are getting as used used quite as much as they once did so uh working on it well, let's see william De silva says anybody have any experience with demarzio 151 paf i have one on the way got it 45 bucks i figured cheap enough to roll the dice i do not i mean i know the, the you know the 
I don't know if there's any difference between DeMarzio. I don't know DeMarzio's nearly as well as I do as I do Duncan's, but uh, DeMarzio's. You know, I don't know if there's a difference between the 151 PAF Pro and the their standard PAF. You know, the PAF is that's a great pickup, and that's like their 57 classic ish, for lack of anything else, not like the description for it. Um, Hey, Jim Waters here in the super chat. Morning, Jim. Says good morning, Robert. As I know, uh, I know what you mean. I'm working my ass off to get my stuff right. Just bought a new camera and stuff. I think I'll be ready when I get all this tech in place. That is, yeah. I mean, it's I. I finally got the camera set up that I, that I like. You know, I love these these uh, Panasonic uh, Lumix bridge cameras that I'm using right now. You know, this is the the one that, that I'm using right now for this is is my uh, it's an FZ three hundred that I've been I bought this one about a year ago now I guess and I love it and the other one that I have uh, is now it's Big Brother which is the FZ one thousand that my uh, my my lovely bride got me for Christmas this year and I really I, I love both of them you know they both do some great they both do a lot of great things they both do exactly what I need them to do. So I'm real happy with my cameras now. Um, I like the light, you know, the, my 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 big softbox that I use. I like the lighting that I have, but it's it, you know one thing I do wish that it. No, I wish it was smaller because it's real big and bulky, and it also takes up a lot of space. And so, you know, I think most of my video production stuff I think is just about set where I need it to be. But audio, uh, you, you know, recording production right now is you know that's that's really what what needs what i need to work what it, what needs to be worked on and what needs to be fixed so you know and the plan that i have in mind uh actually includes you know well it includes a fair amount of you know some, some new shelving and furniture and stuff and that's so i mean it's 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 gonna be a pretty big project but i'll figure it out one of these days i'll get there i got i got an idea in mind. Mm, Ryan Webster says, do you have a favorite Blues Breaker circuit clone pedal? Uh, Blues Breaker? Mm, pretty tough to beat the King of Tone, man. Yeah. Yeah, you know, the old Analog Man King of Tone. Of course, you know, the, you know, the wait list on those things is like... It was a year and a half for a while. My understanding now is, you know, he's getting up to two or three years. Uh, you know, his list has grown so long. I, I keep telling myself I need to just get on it and, you know, pay the, you know, it's cheaper to buy a new one than it is buy a used one because the wait, the wait for those things for a new one is so long. Uh, if you if you find one on the on the used market, you can literally resell it for, you know, probably half again of what you paid for a new one. I you know I did it at the store a few times. A few people would sell us, you know, would sell us used ones, and I would you know I'd be able to pay them almost what they bought what they paid for it new, and then resell it for way more than that. Um, yeah, favorite blues breaker circuit would be that one. I also like the there's a couple of them. Uh, the Marshall, uh, there's you know Marshall's got two uh, two pedal versions. You know they've got the old black stump box, the big the big black stomp box version of it from the 90s those are hard to find uh and then they've got the uh the uh, i think it was the i don't know what they called that that gold series that series of like gold you know standard stomp box size pedals they came out with back in the 2000s but there was a blues breaker uh overdrive version in that series and that, those are they're they're all real i like all i like both of those really really well so hard to find though thanks you know no no thanks to josh scott for telling the rest of the world about him <laughs> everything that dude's channel touches all of a sudden drives the value up like crazy uh Haas coleman says i was looking at a bc rich warlock how do you tell what type it is i think they're uh, i think they're in bronze it depends on the era you know some of them you know some of them is labeled on the headstock what series it is you know if it's a bronze if it's a bronze series that's their entry entry level i mean that is a, that's as cheap as it gets for bc rich and i don't recommend them um you know unless you know unless you're you know you're looking i mean they're built well and they play well enough but they don't sound very good 
you know, and a, and, a, and a new set of pickups won't necessarily fix that problem. I've tried it. <laughs> um, you know, they're in short, they're cheap. So, uh, you know, but sometimes, again, depending on the era, sometimes they'll say on the headstock. Sometimes, you know, you might find something on the neck plate. You know, a lot of it is, you know, you just got to, you just got to know BC Rich. Um, so, you know, if, you know, what I would suggest, you know, hit up one of the, there's, there's a few pretty large size uh, BC Rich groups on Facebook. You know, I would pop a photo or two of it in there, you know, and those guys will be able to tell you right away if, you know, if you can't identify it. There's also the chance you may have a really oddball something or other, and which could also be cool. Mm. Jack Rosa says, hello, Robert. What do you think of the Gibson 1960s Metalist cab, uh, Metalist tube guitar amp? Uh, I've never played one. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about those amps. Gibson made a lot of cool tube amps from like the sit like back in the sixties, I think. Uh, you know, some of them I think were even later than that. I've, I've played some of them that are pretty cool, but that one I'm not familiar with. Hmm. Randall Zimmerman, Randall Zimmerman says, "What pedal would you recommend for the two hundred bucks reverb pedal? We recommend for two hundred bucks. Oh boy, two hundred bucks. Let's see. There is the MXR uh, M uh, M three hundred reverb. That's a really good reverb pedal. Uh, Digitech Polara reverb, uh, which you might still be able to find a few new ones out there." Uh, let's see what else is out there. Those two I really, really like. Uh, and you know, good old fashioned TC Electronic Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, if you wait for the right, you know, I think, you know, it, I want to say the big version of the Hall of Fame, which, you know, like the four switch one, I want to say those, those sell. Anyway, let's look it up. The X4 is what it's called. Oops. Fame X4. There you go. I'll show you guys what I'm looking at here. Hall of Fame X4. Did sell for 250 bucks. We are now going for around $229. So if you can push the budget, your $200 budget, just a little bit, you can get one of these bad boys. It'll do just about everything that you possibly need it to need a reverb pedal to do. You know, plenty of ends, inputs and outputs. Uh, I guess it's, you know, 300 milliamps, 9 volt. Yeah. So all kinds of good stuff on there. That's the Hall of Fame 2, which that's the, uh, that's the current version. Uh, that's the one you want. So. Yeah, the 200 price range, $200 price range. Definitely one to consider. Though I would be remiss if. What is, huh? Open widget. Stream health. Poor. Oh, it must be because I, I flipped over to mine. Screen share software, which does that. Uh, yeah, but I, I, you know, it's that's a good way to go. But I, I 
two hundred bucks, you know, for one or one ninety nine. The M the, the MXR M three hundred is also a really good reverb pedal. So just FYI, doesn't qu- doesn't do quite as much, but the things that it does do sounds really really good. Yeah, and those that's just off the top of my head. There's a ton of you know, uh, William Silva is correct. There's a ton of good reverb pedals out there for two hundred bucks or less. Those are just the ones that came off the top of my head. Uh, DD Paranormal and F Sharp says hello from Boston. Greetings to you. Hello from Indianapolis. Indianapolis is now the 12th largest city in the United States, by the way. And 12, depending on which article you read, 12 to 14, but 12 is probably pretty accurate. My city has grown an awful lot. Uh, Ace XXX Oasis is here. Uh, let's see. Park Hangary says Fish Fluence pickups are good, but nothing special compared to other pickups. I I know a lot of people that love them, but you know I I don't know. Like I said, I haven't played them yet. You know they seem to be one of the you know the hottest you know you know latest and greatest things the metal players a lot of metal metal players anywhere after so i i don't know I haven't gotten to try them yet uh let's see uh tommy turner tommy turner is here uh jim woodard says about the hero and all the crap that it adds to it next camera will be the canon rebel or nikon uh the you know the hero. You know if you if you you bought the uh, you know if you went went with the hero cams. Those are the if if you don't mind the wide angle thing on those, the picture quality on those is actually phenomenal. You know, and, and, and on most of their versions. So yeah, the I've I'm, I've always been really really impressed with the uh, camera quality of the hero stuff. I just you know the wide angle. I don't get along with the wide angle. Mm. And as we, you know, the and Canon, Canon Rebels, and Nikon's, those, those good stuff too. But you know, especially if you're looking for you know, you know, for really affordable DSLR stuff. But you know, I just also I still strongly encourage you to look at the Panasonic line before you pull the trigger on any of those, because Panasonic the the video quality on the Panasonic stuff is top notch as well. Uh, let's see. Archer is here. Says, Afternoon, Robert. I freaking love the Angry Driver. I would still like to see your demo and review of this pedal. Uh, it should be up this week, I believe. Uh, it's, I mean, that one's done. It's just uh, just a matter of waiting. Uh, I think that one is going up this week. I can't recall. I don't Those fails, just look it up. Survey says, "Yeah, Wednesday. You you will see it Wednesday." So. You will see it Wednesday. Jim Woodard used to own the one that I have now. He sold it to me. So, <laughs> uh, let's see, Michael Glass. Uh, oh, you guys are talking amongst yourselves. Uh. JD Mopar says, "Is the Luminex Lumix uh, camera point and shoot, or do you need to buy separate lenses?" Uh, they well, there's you know the Lumix line 
uh, Panasonic encompasses uh that's really encompasses i i think if i understand it right it seems to encompass all of their consumer level of cameras that's you know the pro level cameras that's an entirely different story those things like start at like six g's um you know but you know the stuff that you know most that most people on youtube are using uh you know is all consumer grade cameras uh so this one uh, this particular one is is what they call a bridge camera, and a bridge camera. The uh, the idea here is to be halfway between a point and shoot, uh, which would be you know, which would be something like this. Also, a Panasonic Lumix. This was a uh, this is a uh, DZ30. I think is what this thing was called. ZS40, I'm sorry. Uh, I used this one for a long time, and the only reason I stopped is because the zoom died on it. So, because um, I bought I bought this one refurbished. But uh, you know, so a standard point and shoot. This thing also took shoots really really good video. Uh, and a DSLR, which is something that would be closer in size to this guy, which you know, like you said, you know, that's also gives you the opportunity, you know, the option to switch swap lenses in and out. Well, there's what they call a bridge camera, which is what this is, which is somewhere in between both of those, uh, meaning that it's kind of got the same size and functionality of a DSLR, but the, you know, but it's a fixed lens, you know, that lens doesn't come off. That's, that's, that's on there forever. And, uh, you know, it's got a, this particular one, the zoom on that one, which is actually a smaller camera, but the zoom on my FZ on the FZ 300 is, is far greater than it is on, uh, on this guy, but this one's still got a pretty, pretty, uh, uh, respectable zoom on it. This one goes from 25 to 400 mil millimeters. So, uh, this one zooms in pretty close. Hmm. So to answer your question, no, you know, they, what, you know, you buy that camera and that one's ready to go right out of the box. So that one's, that one's about, that one's about five or 600 bucks. So, which is, you know, which, you know, in camera terms is not bad. <laughs> that's, that's pretty affordable. Park Henry says, Governor and Shredmaster, which were two, two other pedals, uh, those big black box Marshall pedals from the nineties. The, you know, those weren't the blues breaker, the blues breaker pedal, the two others out of there. I like both of those as well. <laughs> uh, yeah. If you haven't already the, uh, you know, it, uh, if you would like to support the channel, you can click that little icon down there. On my, on my screen's below the chat, uh, the little dollar sign there. And, uh, you know, that is, uh, you know, just a, as a reminder, that is a great, great way to support the channel. And I almost forgot. Another great way to support the channel uh, is to check out the Teespring shop, which I admit I need to update, but, you know, there's some stuff in there that I like to consider pretty simple and timeless. Uh, <laughs> so, and I'm usually pretty good about remembering to pin it to the top of the chat, but I forgot this week, so I'm doing it right now. Uh, so, yeah, you can check, you know... Uh, Check that out. There's, you know, there's some t-shirts with some stupid, you know, some stupid dad jokes that I've, that I've told in videos and things like that. So, uh, just, you know, any, any support for the channel goes a long way. Like I said, that money goes, you know, most of that money, just about all that money goes straight back into driving this thing. All righty. <clears throat> Give me a moment here. I need to get caught up. And yeah, Ocean's Eleven's a good reverb too. I forgot all about that one. There's also now they've also got what's the big one? They just can't. The Ocean's Twelve, I think, is what they called it. Name it, naming them all after George Clooney movies. Great films, by the way. Mm -hmm. 
William Silva says R.J. Ronquillo uses the Ocean's Eleven. So good enough for R.J., I'd say it's a pretty good option. And <laughs> I don't disagree. R.J. is a pretty good guitar player. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, Ricky Compton's here. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, oh, Chris, Chris Riot says, are you wearing makeup? And I'm not going to boot him just quite yet. I want to make sure that that's, you know, uh, Couple of you, a couple of you troll, troll radars are already going off on that one. I, I don't know. I'll, 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 give me, I'll give him a chance to see if he actually proves to be. A legit human being. Uh, all right, let's see. And then YouTube did that stupid thing where it jumps all the way down to the bottom where I didn't, when I wasn't ready for it to do so. Michael Glass says I have the Lumix G6 to pop off lens camera for three lens type. That I think G6 is their DSLR version, I believe. I've got the G6 and then I've got the GH series, which I think are their mirrorless cameras that do the same thing. Or maybe maybe I've got those backwards. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, all those you know, any, any Panasonic camera that starts with a G. Top notch. I, I I didn't go for those because they're a little bit more expensive, uh, you know. And I don't need to swap lenses or anything. I mean, most everything I'm doing is I'm doing with a camera of just a you know four, five, six feet away from me. So, mm hmm. Uh, Archer says, holy crap, Robert, you look so thin. You're losing weight, looking good. Uh, and no, I'm not coming on to you. I'm medicated. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah poss possibly a little bit. I've, uh, I've been focusing, uh, a little bit more on my diet here this year. And, you know, so, you know, part of the reason is you know, half the time when I sit down, I do these live streams on, on, you know, on Saturdays, I haven't shaved in a week or and a half or something because I work from home. Uh, but that was not the case this week. So, um, yeah, so working on getting there, you know, I don't know. I haven't uh, really paid too, too much attention. So, uh, you know, but yeah, I have been, you know, focusing a little, little bit more on, uh, you know, a little bit more on my diet here recently as I'm beginning to, I'm beginning to age a little bit. So, Uh, give me a second here. You guys are still chatting pickups amongst yourselves. Uh, Ryan 13 says I'm fashionably late. <laughs> what did I miss? Let's recap. So, well, I've, uh, let's see. I plugged the super chat a few times. Uh, we've talked, uh, we've talked pickups. We've talked spawn amps. We've talked, uh, you know, I think Marshall DSLs for a minute or two. Uh, we've talked cameras, talked, you know, talked about cameras for a little bit and, uh, talked reverb pedals, uh, 412 cabs, uh, you know, budget for good budget 412 cabs. And, uh, I think that's pretty much about it so far. Not necessarily in that order, but uh, that is pretty much everything that we have uh, we have discussed here in the last 56 minutes and 41 seconds since I hit the go live button. Uh, let's see. Uh, 
JD Mopar says, I still prefer EMG over Fishman. I like EMG pickups, but man, the thing, yeah, those things sound the same, the exact same in every single guitar in the world that you put them in. Uh, I mean, you know, if you got, you know, if you need, if you, you know, you really don't even need to pay much attention to the guitar itself. If you're, you know, if you're looking for, you know, the sound of an EMG 81 and 85 combination. <laughs> uh, I mean, there's exceptions to that, but for the most part, you know, they all sound the same. I think, you know, I've always thought that it's a good sound. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying that they sound terrible. It just, you know, they don't, uh, they, you know, outside, outside variables don't seem to matter too, too much. Jim Woodard says, "Yeah, the pic the picture quality is stunning. I'm still learning the settings. Not crazy about the fisheye. Uh, yeah, with the GoPro stuff, you know, uh, the, you know, to eliminate some of the fisheye, zoom in, zoom in some, and you know that'll that'll eliminate some of it, um, fair amount of it actually. So, uh, you know, which means you might have to set the camera farther back. But you know, it's d depending on which version you got, especially if you got one of the 4K, uh, one of the 4K models." You can get some really, really good shots with those things. Really good. I mean, you know, they, you know, if you think about what they're designed for, I mean, you know, they're designed to be, you know, used. People use them underwater. People use them, you know, on, you know, race cars, motorcycles, and uh, you know, I mean, they're they're action cameras. You know, that's what they're designed for. So, uh, you know, in order to capture the action that they're capturing, you know, they got you know requires obviously a really, really good picture. Um, really good video quality, and they do that very, very well. <clears throat> Park Kingery says to me, the sound of the Fishman doesn't justify the price. I have the classic and modern. And I'm just not blown away. Uh, the modern are the ones that I'm that I'm interested in checking out, but you know, one, one thing at a, you know, one thing at a time. So, you know, if, if I do, I don't know, I may, I may still, and, and I may not do it right away. I might still buy, buy a set and put them in that Colt in that Coloss guitar. But you know, that, that guitar has to be almost completely disassembled <laughs> in order to put new pickups in it. So, you know, the ones that do come in it are, you know, I mean, they're not, they're not, they're not really muddy or anything, but they just, they don't have a whole lot of output to them. Like I wish they did. Uh, Jim Woodard says, thanks. I'll look at the Panasonic. Got a hold of you shortly about some monitors. You know where to find me, dude. Mm -hmm. Uh, Troll detected says gargoyle eighty four. <laughs> Seems to have been pretty quiet after that one comment though, so you know must not have uh, thought it was too much fun trolling this particular live stream. That's what I mean. You gotta have like nothing. I mean, like zero zero anything in your life worth living for if that if you're if you're on YouTube looking for people's live streams to troll. You know, and you're just popping in to, you know, to say something stupid to, to whoever. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't understand that kind of, men, that mentality. Ricky Compton says, I'm thinking about the amp tweaked type metal. Oh, the amp, amp tweaker type metal. Uh, that's probably the best metal distortion pedal on the, uh, the, the pro version especially is the best metal distortion pedal out there. And I've said that over and over again. I love that pedal. 
love that pedal. That thing, I mean, it's, it's really more of a preamp that does anything else. I mean, you know, the pro version has got three effects loops on it, <laughs> uh, you know, on the pedal itself. I mean, it does a whole lot, especially if it, it's, if I were building a pedal board, um, and it was for a situation, you know, like a lot of churches will have real, real, real weird, um, uh, I find them weird anyway, rules about no amps on stage anywhere. So, you know, everybody's got to be silent. They got to go direct. Uh, if I were in that situation, the, you know, the type metal pro is probably what I would build my pedal board around. And, you know, that would become my primary amp tone. Uh, and, you know, because it's, you know, it's a 5150 is what it is, you know, almost anyway. I mean, they sound a lot alike. They're both, both of those were designed by the same guy, you know, the legendary, now legendary Mr. James Brown. Um, you know, they sound killer. There's actually a new version too. That you know, the, there's a uh, amp, there's a Type Metal Pro Two that came out at NAM 2020, I believe. I think about a year ago. Uh, that was like the last thing that James Brown did before he sold the company and went to go work for EDH uh, early last year. You know, and then of course, which I know I know he's still doing that. Unfortunately, I was hoping that he would. You know, he and Eddie would get to work together more than they did. Um, where Eddie's un, you know, uh, you know, passed away. God, I still can't believe he's gone. Man, 65 years old. That's, that's still, I don't know, anybody else out there feel like that out there? I mean, that still has not sunk in with me. The, you know, the world no longer has Eddie Van Halen. I still can't, I still can't wrap my brain around that. Wow. Robert, have you played any of the newer SM1 Kramer Stage Masters? I wonder if BC Rich is going to reissue the Gunslinger. Uh, I have, I have a pretty good authority that BC Rich is planning on reissuing the Gunslinger, and sooner rather than later, uh, the SM1s. I was just looking at those yesterday, as a matter of fact. I haven't played one yet, but they sure do look pretty cool. <laughs> uh, if I were going to buy a Kramer tomorrow, that might very well be the one it would be. So uh, I haven't look, I haven't gotten my hands on one yet, but they look pretty sharp. Gibson seems to have done a really, really good job with the new Kramer line. Uh, Ronnie Webster's here. Says, hey, Robert, how are you? I'm good. I'm doing good, sir. I hope you were doing well as well. Ricky Compton says, I've lost 22 pounds in a month and a half on the keto diet. It's hard. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done, I've done keto, you know, a few times, you know, or, you know, uh, a, a few times in the past, I guess, you know, the first couple of times they weren't calling it keto then, but it's the same thing. And, uh, you know, I want the first time in about, what year was that? Hmm. Two thousand seven, two thousand eight, somewhere in there. Two thousand oh seven, oh eight, one of the right around in there. Anyway, I was I got I was all the way up to about two. I think I start I was about two fifty, and I got all the way down to one seventy five in about six months. And you know, and I was I got pretty regimented about it, and you know, I was I was really really committed. And, you know, Fourth of July rolled around, and I was like, finally, I was like. I was at you know, I was at a cookout and I was like I want a damn burger so you know that's kind of when I started backing off and I didn't gain I didn't gain any of it back right away for several years, um, but yeah it's it, it's once you you know once you start seeing some pretty serious results you know then all of a sudden you know it, it you know it motivates you and you know you start being really really conscious about it and. Um, You know, it can it can be done. Mm-hmm. Gargoyle eighty four says, "Hey Robert, what's your favorite wah pedal?" Uh, Ibanez Weeping Demon is my definitely still my favorite wah pedal. Uh, you know, some close. You know, some other others that I also really like though. Or I like most of the Morley wah, wah pedals, but the twenty twenty. Uh, they they uh, they let me demo the 2020 
series uh, Steve Vai Wah, which is the new version of the of the their Steve Vai signature Wah, and uh, that one's really really good as well. Um, you know, there's the video the video that I did for it. Um, I, 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 I wish I had, I had adjusted a few camera angles in there because I'd, I'd never shot a video like that before. So that one was a little bit different, but, um, I, I learned a few things from it, but you know, regardless, you know, the audio was captured pretty well, so you can get an idea of how it sounds. Um, so there's that one. Uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of Morley wall pedals and, uh, the full tone Clyde deluxe is also pretty cool. Uh, Robert, who's your Super Bowl pick? Uh, Kansas City, man. Uh, you know, you know. Number one, when everybody started complaining about the world getting back to normal, Tom Brady making it back to the Super Bowl, I don't think is what everybody had in mind. Uh, <laughs> as much as I love, I, and, I, and I do, I actually do really like Tom Brady. But I, as a Colts fan, I despise the Patriots. So, but he's not with the Patriots anymore. That said, uh, as far as this year's Super Bowl goes, uh, the you know, I just I, I got to go with Kansas City. I just don't think I just don't think T- Tampa's defense can stop Kansas City's offense. Period. End. So, you know, and I don't think Tampa's offense is going to be enough to score enough points to overcome the points that Kansas City's defense are gonna, or Kansas City's offense is going to score. Patrick Mahomes is a really really special player. I mean, that kid's. That kid is really, really impressive. So, <clears throat> so yep, I'm going Kansas City. That's uh, actually the, the third thing, and we and that's the third thing that I got to do is go out to here this evening, and uh, we're gonna stop at the grocery store and get a some stuff to make a Super Bowl Super Bowl meal with, which is kind of a Jackson family tradition around here. Uh, William Silva says those type metal pedals look stunning. Haven't played one, but if they sound as good as they look, then we got a winner. Trust me, they sound better than they look. They are phenomenal pedals. Do I have? I I, don't, I thought I had my I thought I had my type metal pro out here, but I don't. <coughs> um, just tr- just trust me. You know, one thing I, I I will say, one thing I have struggled with with the with the Type Metal Pro is it, I've, I've struggled with it with getting a, a good sound, uh, you know, a good recorded sound out of it for some reason, you know, and I I'm I need to play around with that a little bit more, but that's more than likely the user, not the not the device. <laughs> Robert, have you had any experience with the PV Invective? I'm thinking about getting the MH version. Uh, the I haven't played with that, but I mean they, they sound great. I mean, the, of course, the, the PV Invectives are based on the on the 5150 slash 6505s that you know Misha Mansur has been using forever. So you know they sound great. Um, Doug Santin Yellow of the Super Chat says, "Go Chiefs!" Oh, sorry, that might be offensive. <laughs> I don't find it. I don't find it. You know anybody's uh, fan affiliation with, you know, with with their favorite NFL team offensive. If somebody's offended that I'm a Colts fan, then that's their problem. Um, but the invectives are. I mean, like I said, they're based on the you know the fifty one fifties that uh, slash sixty five hundred fives that Misha played for years. And now, comparing the MH, the uh, the the Invective MH to the 6505 MH, there's, uh, I think the 60, they sound, I think, pretty similar. Uh, the 6505 MH, I think, has the, uh, what is it? There's one, one thing that the 6505 has that the Invective does not. Let me... I was just looking at this a couple of months ago, and I've, I've already forgotten now. <clears throat> the 6505MH, uh, the bright switch, I think. Uh, was it the bright switch? I think it was the bright switch. No, surely something more significant than that. 
resonance, presence, uh, resonance, presence, and reverb all on the 6505MH. And then the Invective MH. Got the noise gate on it, but that's easily fixed. And no bright switch and no reverb. So, tone wise, though, I mean, they're, I think they're actually pretty similar. Actually, pretty similar tone wise, but, you know, they, they, they both do have some pretty cool. Uh, pretty cool features on them for like, you know, DIs, you know, direct outs and, you know, emulated speaker outs, that kind of stuff. So. Uh, let's see. Michael Glass says, OMG, Robert nailed it with my opinion on EMG. They don't really give a guitar a unique character. Just my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've, I've kind of felt like that for a while about, you know, well, God, 10, 15 years about EMGs. Like I said, they don't, it was not a bad tone. They don't sound bad. I, I, I own plenty of guitars with EMGs in it. You know, I just know that if I, t I, if I took those pickups out and stuck them in, out of the guitars they're in and stuck them in another guitar, it wouldn't sound any different. <laughs> The one exception to that, though, the one exception to that would be my Zach Wild Les Paul. That one, for some reason, and maybe it's in the pickups obviously have a lot to do with it, but that guitar sounds like Zach Wild, which is different from the rest of my EMG guitars. Ryan13 says, Marshall DSL question. I'm ready to buy a DSL 20 head. Doing my research, I read there's a volume drop with the effects loop when going from clean to crunch, so looping from clean to crunch, impossible. Uh, I, that, that I haven't heard of. I'm not, I'm not familiar with any volume drops in the effects loop. That's, that's a new one to me. Um, you know, in the instance that I'm wrong, I mean, that could probably be pretty easily corrected with either a boost pedal you know, like an always on boost pedal or a volume pedal in the effects loop to, you know, to counteract that. Um, I've run into that, run into that with other amps before in the past, but, uh, the DSL, uh, uh I can't remember the DSL 20 has got a level on the effects loop or not. I don't think it does. I think the 40 might, in which case it might be worth, you know, spending an extra hundred bucks or so and step it up to the 40 and then switching it down. Cause I think that one's got a half power switch on it. You can play a 20 watts if you need to. So, yeah, that's my advice, you know, but they sound great. So, uh, you know, if Jim Woodard's still hanging out here, you know, maybe he can weigh in on that because he owns a DSL 40 and, uh, he's been champion. He's been a champion of that app for of the, of that amp for, you know, basically since he bought it, uh, juggernaut V2 is here. Says much love for RGD over here. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Much love to all you guys here as well. Yep. Everybody that took the time to come and hang out today. I greatly appreciate it. You know, if you'd like to support the channel, uh, again, this is for anybody that uh, I may not have been here when I plugged it the first couple of times today, uh, but you can do so. There is the, uh, the little dollar icon thing there down there at the bottom that you can do so with. Uh, you can, if you would like to eliminate the middleman, you can go down to the description section, the description box rather, and uh, get the link to my PayPal account and uh, you can do so there as well, in which case I'll get an alert on my phone. I'll make sure and give you a shout out here when that comes in. Um, you know, and there's also that Teespring shop there pinned uh, at the very top of the chat. You can uh, click that and get yourself a T-shirt. Those help as well. So any support to the channel goes a long, long way. Uh, 
Ryan 13 says, apparently everyone has to be sent back to Marshall to be fixed. Uh, that's, that's news to me. I'm, I'm not familiar with that at all. Uh, you know, and I've, I've been selling these things for a while. I haven't heard about anybody having to send it back to Marshall. That's, I'd, I'd be, I'd be curious to know where, where that information is coming from. Uh, Jim Woodard says, no one likes to troll. Why do people like to be disliked so much? You know, that person is an incel who cries because no one who wants to be near him and he smells. I also have a theory that's also people that simply did not get laid in high school. Michael Glass says, I wouldn't want to play without amps behind me. It feels wrong. J.D. Mopar says, I agree. Need the air pushing from behind behind through a loud cab. That's, I mean, that's that's what I believe in, too. But, you know, nowadays there's more and more stages that are, you know, forcing forcing their uh, their artists to go silent. And, uh, you know, I have I have yet. I've never played a gig with in-ear monitors. And I've refused, to, I've refused to do so. And I know people tell me that I should, you know, that's something I should do. But... You know, I just, I, you know, the old school guitar player in me just, just, I mean, I've, I've just always believed that, you know, part of, you know, if you're playing on stage, it's everybody's responsibility to know where they're at and when they're supposed to be, you know, what they're supposed to play, when they're supposed to play it. Uh, just how I've always done it. So, I mean, I've never used inner, inner monitors. I know I'm, you know, I'm going to have to succumb to it one of these days, I'm sure, but, uh, you know, especially if, you know, I, I haven't, I haven't been forced to play on a silent stage yet, but you know, I, the more, the more often that I see it happening, you know, around, you know, around our industry, I know it's, 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 it's a matter of time and I'm going to have to break down by a pair, by a set of in-ears. Ricky Compton said, yeah, Eddie dying is such a tragedy. He was hoping for some new material from him. It's so sad he changed the, he changed the guitar world. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I loved Eddie Van Halen. You know, he was uh, you know, definitely an innovator with his gear, with gear as much as anybody. And, you know, <laughs> he was also a pretty okay guitar player, by the way. But, yeah, I just... I mean, he's you know that that if there's one name out there that was synonymous with guitar god, it was Eddie Van Halen. So it's just it's just weird. It just I just can't get used to the fact that he's no longer you know he's not with us anymore. I just can't get used to that yet. Michael Glass says, I hate modelers, profile, profilers. Spend more time turning knobs than I do playing. It's just not my bag. Same here, dude. I'm not a, I am not a, I'm not a modeling, modeler kind of guy at all either. Not my thing. Ronnie Webster says, I started keto back in July. I was 336, and I'm down to 230 now. Lots of exercise as well. Good for you, man. That's awesome. Over, over 106 pounds since July. That's the, you, should, you should be proud of that, dude. Seriously, that's, that's a lot of hard work. Good for you. Uh, Crazy Cook 76. Oh, damn it. I scrolled down to read your comment, and YouTube did the stupid thing on me. Hi, Robert. Uh, there it is. Crazy Cook 678. I'm sorry. It says, Hi, Robert. Uh, it's funny you mentioned Eddie. I'm still having a tough time with the thought of him being gone. Yeah. It'll, it'll, you know, it'll set in eventually. It has to, but it just, it, it just, when have we ever not had Eddie Van Halen? You know, we have never not had, I mean, in my, in my lifetime, there's never not been an Eddie Van Halen. (laughs) 
Michael Glass says, uh, Michael Glass says, Jim Root said it best. Nothing beats a real amp in the room. His live tone is insane. William Silva says, Mahomes is the next great quarterback. I think he's already there. You know, God, he, his first year as a starter, the dude threw 50 touchdowns. <laughs> he tied Tom, he tied, you know, he, he tied what was once Tom Brady's record. <laughs> He's now tied for second all time for uh, most touchdowns in, in a single season, you know, in his, in his first year as a starter. So, yeah, yeah, the, the kid's a stud. And now, you know, since then, he's been to two, you know, you know, as of tomorrow, he, he will have since played in two Super Bowls and won at least one of them, and I think going to be two. So, yeah, Patrick Mahomes is going to be a stud, dude. Well, he he already is a stud. He's you know he's gonna be he's gonna be the you know if he's if he's not already considered the face of the league, yeah, you know, I suppose he probably won't be as long as Brady's still playing. But uh, if he's not the face of the league yet, he soon will be. Hmm. Tommy Turner says, glad to see all these real amp fans. I thought I was just behind the times. I don't think so, man. I, th- I think there's a, there's a lot of people that are still, you know, still prefer playing real amps over, uh, you know, over processors and going direct and stuff like that. So, you know, but, you know, it's, you, I, I watched a video today. Somebody was, uh, somebody was saying that, uh, matter of fact, it was the guy from uh, five watt world. You know, and I've I, I've I've only seen you know a couple of those videos, uh, but you know he was he was uh, he was doing an interview with Fluff on Fluff's channel. So, uh, but he was saying that you know they, we probably should start preparing ourselves for the fact that tubes are going are no longer going to be available. You know, there's not too many technologies left that still use guitar tubes, or the, or that still use vacuum tubes, and you know guitar amps, of course, is one of them. You know, but there's only three or four or five factories that left in the world that still make them to begin with. And, you know, as much as the industry starts moving away from tubes, you know, the it stands to reason eventually they're going to go away. So, you know, when there's no more tubes being made, you know, we may be forced to. So I, I don't know if that's going to happen in my lifetime or not, but <laughs> uh, it wouldn't surprise me if it did. Jeff Parker says, hey, Robert, made it today. Just got done blowing snow. Woo, so much snow, 16 inches. Uh, can, you know, that's, that's why I will never live in Michigan. <laughs> no, thank you. We've had our share of, you know, snow and freezing rain and stuff. And, you know, you can, you know, a lot of, some of it's kind of, you can see some of it's kind of begin, begin to melt off a little bit here again. But, you know, that's, even this is too much for my taste. So, you know, we, and we've, we've had a lot of freezing rain and sleet and stuff too. That's been more annoying than anything else, but uh, Jeff Parker says, uh, hey, ever try the Daw Reaper? Uh, or the Daw Reaper, or you pretty much just use Pro Tools. Um, I actually, yes. Um, you know, Reaper is handy because, you know, it's a lot of people like Reaper because it's free and it's also a full-size Daw. Uh, I tried it once a while, you know, like when I was first trying to learn how to use a DAW and had nobody showed me anything of it all about how to use it. And, and honestly, I gave up on it. I haven't gone back to it since. Uh, I need to go back and give it another shot just, be, you know, just because it's, you know, I, I've learned a lot more now than I knew then. So uh, I need to go back and give it, give it another shot. But, you know, I, I recommend it to people all the time that are looking to looking to get into a DAW. Um, just because, you know, again, you know, if they don't, you know, if they don't want to drop four or five hundred, four or five or six hundred bucks, that's a pretty good way to go. Right. Um, <clears throat> you know, and I, I actually, st- I actually had stopped using Pro Tools about a year ago because Abbott had decided to go be, go and be dicks about my, uh, you know, about my license, you know, and they wouldn't, you know, they had, you know, as, you know, as, as since I, I work for an Abbott dealer and I've sold their products for, I don't know how long. You know, I mean, I've always gotten my, they've always been good to me and renewed my license. But last year, like I said, they decided to be dicks about it. And, 
you know so i you know said okay fine you know <laughs> you don't want me to use your product you know that's fine with me i'm not going to sell your product anymore and uh, i'm going to start using studio one instead and I've, so there you, therefore i've been using studio one for the last uh, you know exclusively for the last year down so i love pro tools but I didn't like how Abbott treated me with treated me uh, on that on that exchange, and the the email they sent me about it was na- was a nasty email too. I think that's probably what turned me off of it more than anything. Uh, Ronnie Webster says in the super chat says ring doorbells are great, especially if you're on vacation, and want to keep an eye on things. Uh, that was one, one reason why I got one. I need, now I need to have it installed. My regular handyman guy won't do it. <laughs> uh, apparently he, uh, he's had some, he's had some bad luck with, uh, with putting in ring doorbells. So I got to find somebody else to put it in for me. Cause I don't, you know, it's, you know, we've got vinyl siding on our house, and I don't want to be the one drilling into it and having. You know, it's it's just I could probably figure it out, but I'm I'm not. I'd rather just pay somebody fifty bucks or hundred bucks or whatever to put it in and save myself the headache. So, mm, pardon me, but in Indianapolis in February with snow and ice on the ground. Hard to find somebody willing to come out and do that. <laughs> hmm. uh, Charles seventy five N says, "Got to run. Have a good one, folks." Charles, enjoy the rest of your weekend, sir. Uh, let's see. You guys are still talking amongst yourselves. Jeff Parker says the 40, he's referring to the DSL 40, by the way, uh, has a level on the effects, uh, the effects loop. I know for sure one of my favorite amps recommend the DSL 40 CR. So there, I thought the DSL 40 had the level on the effects loop. I don't think the 20 does. Uh, but you know, if, if you're concerned about the volume drop and the effects loop on the, on the DSL 20, like I said, that alone might be enough reason for you to step up to the 40 just as a suggestion. Cause I think the, you know, the difference in price is probably going to be nominal, particularly if you wait for the next, uh, you know, retail sale weekend, you know, with a coupon. Ricky Compton says, Ronnie, the VHT Pitbull will be my next head of the deliverance, but they're not cheap. I've, lo- I've always, I've loved both those heads for as long as I can remember, uh, the Pitbull in particular. You know, I wouldn't even mind own- owning a Fryette version. I mean, there's really no difference between the Fryettes and the Pitbulls. It's the same guy building the same amps, just different name. But I've always, always wanted a Pitbull, you know, VHT Pitbull, but like you said, they're pricey. You know, and I've, I, I've got so many 100 watt amp, not so many, but you know, I've got suddenly, you know, a lot of, you know, 100 watt plus amplifiers sitting around here. That, you know, I kind of got to be careful with how I, you know, how and when I get to use those anyway. Uh, Ronnie Webster says, I've got a zombie, which I love, and the next on my list is the Invective, and then maybe a Marshall, and I'm pretty happy there. I, I like the zombie. I, uh, you know, I, I kind of hated to sell it, you know, because I, I, and I just sold it last week. I'm still trying to, tr- still trying to sell the Jackman, by the way. Uh, but, I mean, the truth is, I, I know I'm, I'm never going to, I know I'm never going to use it just because I've got so many other amps laying around that I do use. You know, it just didn't make sense to keep that one hanging around. So I sold that one, and that one, uh, the money of that, and went went into the Les Paul fund. Uh, 
William DeSilva says, y'all that like mini heads, look up the Buddha Superdrive series. They have Freeman design preamps in them. Uh, they sound awesome, plus reasonably priced. I paid 600 bucks for my 18 watt. Interesting. I didn't know that. I will have to check into those. Who carries Who carries Buddha? Buddha amps these days. Uh, what is that called? Buddha Super Drive. There. I'll tell you what. Let's have a look see, shall we? Buddha Super Drive. I know you know Guitar Center doesn't carry them, unfortunately, because. Oops, yeah, I spelled Buddha wrong. <laughs> you know, unless they got a few used ones laying around, but. Which is, I don't know why they don't carry them, though, because we carry, you know, they carry PV. PV owns Buddha. Buddha Super Drive 80, Super Drive 45, those are new ones. Super Drive 30. These are eighteen hundred dollar amps, though. I'm wondering if you bought yours used. Superdrive thirty used for seven eighty nine. Wow. Well, I gotta be honest. I think if you bought, if you paid six hundred bucks for uh, for years, you got a hell of a deal. Uh, Bali is, is uh, forgive me. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to pronounce your, your pronounce your name here, but I'm quite sure I'm gonna murder it. Uh, Bali S S Rios says, is there any difference? when you switch an amp from 8 ohms to 16 ohms. Uh, depends on the speaker that, the speaker that you have plugged into it. And uh, you know, these, what you want to do is you want to make sure to match up your, your speaker, your amp and speaker resistance. If you're plugging into an 8 ohm cabinet, an 8 ohm speaker cabinet, you need to, be, you need to have the amps either set or plugged into the 8 ohms output. Uh, same thing, you know, if Marshalls are notorious, you know, not notorious, but, you know, Marshalls, primarily run on 16 ohms uh mono anyway in a lot of cases so you know if you're you want to make sure it and, and if you're using a 1960 cab which is you know generally a 16 ohm cab uh you want to make sure that you got the headset at 16 ohms and the reason why is because if those two resistance uh you know the, if those two resistances do not match you have a you, know, you run the chance of blowing up one or the other so uh you know is there a difference in sound not necessarily, you know, when you switch it down to, you know, to a lower resistance. So, you know, if you, if, if you're able to switch both of them down, for example, like, you know, say, for example, you're running a, a, a head and cabinet combo at 16 ohms and you have the option to switch both of them down to, to eight ohms or even four ohms, uh, it's probably going to get louder, but, you know, it's probably going to get louder because you're, you know, you're, you're, you're opening the valve up a little bit farther and more you know uh, more currents coming through but you know is it going to change the tone no Okay, give me a minute here. Let me get caught up in the chat. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ricky Compton says, I have two Marshall heads, a 2100 Mark III JCM 900. I love those heads. Uh, a 4100 JCM 900. That's the dual reverb, which I also love and I own. JCM 900s get a bad rep. Uh, they do, and I, uh, I'm, I'm actually working on a video involving that, uh, involving that amp here, very, very soon. Matter of fact, this week. 
Um, or the first one. Ran a one one Diablo. Thomas Golden says, "What's the best lowest priced uh, range booster or treble booster pedal?" Ooh, uh, I would say, I mean, best you know, lowest priced one probably the TC Electronic uh, Spark Mini Booster, about fifty bucks. It's a great little boost pedal. You know, if you're if you're looking for a boost on a budget, that's probably the way that I would go. Um, yeah. Joyo has a boost as well. Uh, the, the Wild, the Wild Boost, I think is what it's called. I demoed it on my channel last year. Um, you know, but that, I was actually pretty pretty impressed with that one. That's a little. That's other Iron Man series, which is that little teeny tiny little little series of pedals that they have. Uh, and that one's actually got some. You know, it's actually sounded pretty good. So. Uh, I would uh, encourage you to go check out that video on my channel and uh, get an idea of that one. That's a good, good little boost. That one's got, I think, you can actually boost low and high end with that one. Maybe even mids. Uh, hey, my buddy Paul Baker's here. He says, hey, Robert, I'd love, uh, know when they're, love to know their Angus Young fires. I'd love to know uh, to their, I'm, I'm having trouble deciphering your, your typos. <laughs> uh, fires a stage manager who tells him to turn. No, oh, yeah. He says, I'd love to know when uh, Angus Young fires a stage manager who tells him to turn down his amps. Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, there's probably a reason why those guys haven't been fired. So, but yeah, you know, you know, and that's the thing with you know one th one thing I love about ACDC, man. What you hear on the records, that's what they sound like live. Same, you know, using the same amp, same gear, just mic'd up, and a lot louder. <clears throat> Michael glasses. Could anybody imagine a doom band like Sleep without that wall of orange behind them? Uh, I'm the wrong guy to ask for that. I'm not a. I'm not much. I'm not a doom. I'm not much of a doom fan. Nothing. I don't have anything against it, but you know, I don't have any, anything against doom, good doom bands like Sleep that you mentioned, for example. But you know, you know, but it's the bad doom bands that you know that drone on and play two or three power chords at about four beats per minute for what seems like hours. That I just I I. You know, You know, my my brain can't wrap. I can't wrap my brain around any of that. How anybody could possibly find that pleasant to listen to or even or entertaining? Thomas Golden says, "What do you think about the Boss Katana Mark II fifties? Uh, I think all the Boss Katana amps are killer, man. I think they're you know some they're that's one of the best value amps on the market right now, and uh, especially in that." You know, again, I'm not a modeling guy, so I mean, it's, I'm not, I'm never gonna run out and buy one. But, you know, but if, you know, anytime I that I've I've got somebody looking for a budget amp with you know a lot of versatility, I mean, that's usually my first suggestion. So, I mean, they're tough to beat. Alex Thorpe says, Robert, who's your favorite band from the last 50 years? Uh, Metallica, closely followed by Kiss. Always have been those two bands. So. You know the, the you know James Hetfield is the reason why I play guitar today, period. End. You know he's he's by far been my biggest inspiration. So, <clears throat> pardon me. Mm. And you guys are talking amongst yourselves. Doug Santana Yellow, Santana Yellow. I, I still haven't. I'm sure I mispronounced that about eight times by now. But uh, says first time I saw snow was in Indianapolis in 1982. First time I saw snow was in Houston of all places. I think in about 1985. You know, it was a, something like that. I mean, it was a really, really rare incident. It probably probably earlier than that actually. I mean, because, you know, it's really, really rare instance where, I mean, it snows like once every eight years in Houston. So, 
you know, it's that one thing, you know, they get three or four or five inches and the entire city freaks out and shuts down because they don't know what to do with it. Uh, let's see. Ricky Compton says I bought six boxes of NOS tubes from one of my dad's old buddies who owned a TVCB repair uh, repair shop. I'm glad I did. That uh, was <laughs> probably pretty smart that you did. You know, you may not need them right away if you still have them anyway. But <clears throat> OG OG says snow. It's minus 40 degrees here. Fahrenheit or Celsius all becomes the same. Minus 40. No thanks. Dave Escobar says, Laney, I only pedal, uh, I only boost pedal. I heard it's pretty good range master type boost. Uh, I've heard that as well about that pedal. I've never played it, but I've heard good things about it. Thomas Golden says, anyone tried the Amazon Basics distortion pedals yet? Uh, no, but, uh, you know, Trey Xavier from Gear Gods has done so many videos on the overdrive pedal, <laughs> the Amazon Basics overdrive pedal that, uh, you know, the, it, <laughs> You know, they, I, I've, I've got a pretty good, you know, good enough idea with how they, uh, you know, how they all seem to perform. They seem to be pretty good, especially for the price. Jeff Parker says, that's my issue. Have Pro Tools uh, get sick of licensing and so on, thinking Ableton or Reaper, but Reaper seems to be better. Yeah, that's well. That's kind of one reason why I went with Studio One. You know, I bought it once and it's mine. Um, and you know, now you know they've since come out with, with uh, Studio One Five. I'm still on four, but you know they've since come out with Studio One Five. And uh, you know maybe I'll give that a shot as well. But I mean, I just you know with Studio, it was just nice to know that I'm never going to have that problem again. You know, it's mine. It's on here. It you know it's I own it. It works. It's period done. You know, <clears throat> mm -hmm. William Silva says, Has anybody used or used native instruments? I got a free with my GNL, but never hear people talk about using it for guitar. I have not used a matter of fact. I've never used a period. It, it seems you know native instrument. It seems to be a lot geared a lot more towards uh, you know more towards like electronic music. Same with that. You know, really same with Ableton too. But uh, you know a lot. Uh, I you know Ableton's kind of. I see a lot more a lot more like guitar players and rock bands and stuff moving towards Ableton as well. I have not tried it yet. I'm so I'm not I'm not real familiar with it. Let's see. Dave Escobar recommends the Carl Martin Plexi Ranger. Which is anything Carl Martin's a good pedal. Uh, Michael Glass says, "Are Buddha made by PV these days?" As far as I know, you know they've, uh, you know, as far as I know, they still own PV. So I don't, I don't know, if the, you know, if they, if, if the Buddha stuff is made in the PV factories. Uh, I, I assume, you know, that they're, I assume Buddha still has their own independent factory. They're just under the PV umbrella, but yeah, I don't know. See or hear of anything new from Schechter 2021. Seen one new artist model last week, but nothing else. I, you know, I haven't seen uh, any of Schechter's new lineup yet, to be honest. Uh, you know, I mean, they, Seem to be, they've always been pretty good about coming up, coming out with some pretty cool stuff every year around uh, around Nam time. So, uh, but no, I haven't. I haven't been. Uh, I haven't. You know, there's there's not a zillion different Nam videos, you know, popping up in my YouTube feed like there usually is. So I haven't been keeping up with it uh, quite as much this year as I as I usually do. So I keep telling myself I'm I'm going to go get caught up and you know see what everybody else is coming out with, but I. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> mm. 
Paul Baker says, great trouble booster, question mark. Uh, it says, look at used cattle and bred Naga Viper. Not familiar with that one. So, it says I'm sorry for the typos. I'm half blind. Yes, I, 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 <laughs> yes, I know. I know your uh, your your vision is not quite what it used to be, but you know you're a good enough guitar player that uh, you make up for it. So, Paul's a good friend of mine. Mm. Sandra Elizabeth Ross says hello, Robert. What is the best amp for church bands? Have a super weekend. Oh boy. I don't know that there's any any amp you know best amp for church bands, and I'm certainly not an authority of, of you know I'm not an authority on on uh, you know gear that praise and worship uh, people like to use. But I what I do know you know a lot of a lot of praise and worship people you know players really really like to build giant pedal boards, uh, and for that reason you know I know a lot of churches actually will have a Roland JC120. Uh, sitting, you know, standing by for them to run into because a Roland JC120 has a really, really, you know, probably the best clean tone on the planet and takes pedals exceptionally well. So, uh, Roland JC120 is great. You know, we've been talking a lot about the Marshall DSLs uh, on this live stream today, which I think are also great for that. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff. Amps are amps are you know are being built. There's so much. They're so much more versatile now than they used to be. You know, they're not all, you know, they're not all like the JC made hundreds. You know, which are basically one you know one trick ponies. Uh, even though that one trick they do is really really well, but uh, you know, there you don't really see too many amps that are coming out these days that are designed like that anymore. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, Lenario Padalot says hi, Sir Robert. Sub from Philippines. Would you recommend I upgrade my low quality strat with good parts or buy a better quality guitar? I've been eyeing uh eyeing for a Tajima T W sixty one or the parts. Honestly, if it were me, I would recommend, you know, I you know, if you're if you can, and I understand not everybody's I, not everybody can, and I've been in this position before but as well. Uh, you know, if you can, I'd recommend you save, you know, just save up the money and, and buy a better guitar. You know, upgrading the parts and stuff is, you know, that I man, that's a, that's a good side project to do. But, you know, for, in my opinion, but, uh, you know, I, I've always found, you know, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you know, if, if when I'm looking to buy a guitar, you know, if, if a guitar that I'm looking at, if I, if I see that it has cheap or garbage pickups or electronics or something like that in it, that's enough from, that's enough to turn me off. And, pardon me, you know, and I won't buy it for that reason. So, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I'm of the opinion that, you know, upgrading, there are exceptions, but, you know, upgrading hardware and electronics and all that kind of stuff to, you know, especially really, really inexpensive guitars, I think is a, is a huge waste of money, you know, I mean, you can, you can put that money into a better guitar. Jeff Parker says Kemper best for church band check out Tone Junkie TV channel that's all he does is worship that's true yeah Kemper Kemper's are, are, are all the modelers you know the Kemper's a helix especially uh, is really popular for praise and worship bands. You know, uh, the, you know the thing about the, I think one reason why a lot of people like the Helix is because they like the uh, you know they like all the signal routing options on it that you can that you can do with the full size version anyway. You know, the smaller versions don't, don't offer everything the big one does, obviously. But uh, JC one twenty. JG Mopar and William De Silva both weighing in. Yes, I, I. That's another one of those pieces of gear that I've always loved, and I don't know why I don't own one. <laughs> you know, probably because those amps. You know, now they're up around twelve hundred bucks these days, but you know, so they're they're not cheap, but not overly expensive either. But still, they're great, great amplifiers. 
Tommy Turner says, Gibson buying Mesa is scary as hell given their past history. Uh, they've assured us so far at this point there's not going to be a whole lot of change that we see at the consumer level. Honestly, I'm, I'm actually pretty optimistic about it because, uh, you know, I'm hoping that that means that, you know, Mesa boogie amps will finally begin to be available in, you know, in more stores than they are currently. Because right now, they're, you know, they, they don't, I think their, their rule of thumb for dealerships within proximity to each other, they, want, they don't want any more than two stores, they don't want two stores any more than 75 miles within each other, uh, or any less than 75 miles away from each other, selling their product. Uh, you know, and that's just, that's just, they've always, they've always been that way. So, you know, now... I'm hoping that, you know, because Gibson's carried in far more places than Mesa Boogie has ever been. So now I'm hoping all those places that carry Gibson, at least most of them, now suddenly start to begin to carry Mesa Boogie if they don't already. Uh, and that's going to make availability of Mesa Boogie amps, you know, it's going to give people a lot more, a lot easier access to their amps than they had before. And, you know, my understanding is they're still, you know, Mesa Boogie's factory's not going anywhere. The, you know, the employees that are building amps aren't going anywhere. It's, you know, all the same thing it's always been, just now with, you know, Gibson, you know, Gibson, more specifically Gibson's parent, parent investment parent company, um, backing them financially. Dennis P says classic 50 from the early 90s and it says I'll bet you don't know I'm, I'm not real sure what you're referring to but you're if you're referring to the PV classic 50 I've uh, I've talked about that amp many many times uh, on this channel I love a class PV classic series those things sound fantastic something about you know there's just something about PV amps I've been that I've really you know, always always had an appreciation for they've they've had some they've had some clunkers over the years that I you know and I, I can't help myself but to make front make fun of them but uh, but you know, God, you know, the 5150s, 6505s, classic series, you know, the invectives and, you know, so many others and PB's put out some really, really good amps for a long time. Uh, my wave 78 says, hello, what do you think of Yamaha THR five for guitars? Uh, great amps, man. The, uh, Yamaha THR series are some of the best practice amps out there. I just did a video, uh, just posted a video last week. <clears throat> um, just posted a video last week on the, uh, you know, greatest practice amps ever. And, uh, the, all the, the Yamaha THR stuff was included. So yeah, they're, you know, especially the new, the new, versions you know the thr twos that just came out in the last year or so sound even better so uh david ross says i have a cube 60 amp it crackles sometimes and will lose volume sometimes is it still a good amp to use in a church band or should i upgrade uh I, i've gigged my cube 40 before you know i've been, you know got to mic it up of course but um, you know, if you're, if you're, if you're experiencing problems like that, though, you know, where it's, you know, crackling, you got volume drops, that's a short circuit of some kind on the inside of it. If it could be fixed, you know, it might be able to get that done fairly inexpensively. If not, it might be, it's probably time for a new amp. So, um, yeah, I mean, I would take it to an amp repair tech and have them have a look at it, see if they could figure it out real quick. Cause it could be something really simple, but in the instance that it's not, you know, and you got a blown speaker or something. Then it's like I said. Then it's, it's it's probably time for a new amp. Uh, Ronnie Webster says, Robert, uh, do you prefer the dual rectifier, fifty one fifty sixty five five? Uh, two totally different. You know, I I don't I. It's kind of hard to say that you know whether I prefer one over the other because you know the what the the you know in Mesa Boogie Land by the way I mean the rectifiers are not my favorites. Uh, I'm I much prefer the Mark series. You know, Mark fours, Mark fives. Uh, that said, you know, I don't, I don't hate rectifiers, but, uh, you know, I don't, I don't have to have one like everybody else on the planet for some reason. <laughs> um, 
you know, the, uh, you know, I guess that's also another reason why I sold my zombie because, you know, it's, I mean, it sounds, it sounds just like a rectifier, but you know, it's, it's got that, that bottom end to it. Uh, that's, you know, kind of, you know, kind of loose and flubby and, you know, it's one, it didn't used to bother me, but you know, now as, as we're moving into this new era of high gain amps and everybody's looking for tighter bottom end, you know, my ears kind of followed. So, you know, and that sound is not quite as, you know, uh, not quite as, you know, pleasing to me as it once was. Uh, the 6505s, on the other hand, don't seem to do that, you know, but they don't have nearly as much bottom end as the rec fires do. So, you know, so th- between the two, I don't know, man. Uh, you know, there's, like I said, there's there's so many. I mean, there's there are two different amps I would use for two different purposes. You know, I mean, Mesa Boogie, you know, the rectifiers, you know, the Mark series. I mean, that's like, it's like Dream Theater all day long, you know, and as big of, as much of a Metallica fan as I am, uh, you know, unless it's an early Mark series, you know, well, the rectifiers I would never use use to play use for Metallica, you know, Metallica tones, but the uh, you know the sixty five oh fives on the other hand, I mean that's just I've always thought about those as just a, you know they're you know I've always thought they were a better rock amp than they were a metal amp, you know they got plenty of gain and stuff, but uh, I don't know, you know plenty of people have just proven my theory on that as well, so. Yeah, so there you go. All right, guys, I am going to uh, end this thing, and uh, I'm going to go enjoy the rest of my weekend. New video goes up tomorrow morning. Thank you to those of you that supported the you know the support of the channel, uh, either via the super chat or uh, via the PayPal uh, account stuff or any other way. I don't I, I don't have a I don't get alerts if anybody buys T-shirts or not, but. Um, you know, anyway, it, and for those of you that uh, just came in here to hang out and uh, chat gear and, and uh, you know, ask questions and stuff like that, you know, you are also greatly, greatly appreciated. So, uh, everybody, have a great weekend. Don't forget to check out the video tomorrow morning, and uh, au revoir. <laughs>